It's a great pleasure to have Mick and Martin. Um, we've agreed to do a video for my YouTube channel, and they're both veteran campaigners from the the Poll Tax Resort. Do you want to say they're very old? <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I want. I, I've been wanting some youth. <laughs> yeah, 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 got that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we need to get the voice of the youth out there. He's 15 in his head, I'm 16. <laughs> Both uh, veteran campaigners from the heavily involved in the poll tax revolt and the poll tax uh, federation back in the 80s. And uh, they've agreed to do an interview for my YouTube. And um, so what you know is the last <coughs> of the great mass movements, a working class mass revolt and mass movement which was victorious and brought down not only the poll tax itself but Thatcher. So I just, I wouldn't, wouldn't, could you just let us know what the poll tax was, when it, you know, how it first came about and how people responded to it and stuff? You used to have uh, domestic rights and uh, they weren't ideal but they're fair because it, based on where you lived, if you had a big house you tend to pay more, which as we do now. Well, Thatcher decided she didn't like that, so she brought in the what she called a community charge that everybody called a poll tax. And what it was was a set rate for everybody. Uh, but if you had, say, you had four people working in a house, you got two, a couple of teenage kids, right? You might not be on much money, but you all have like to pay the same poll tax. So if it, say it was set up to a new 50 quid, They'll be paying a thousand pounds. If you've got some millionaire living in a mansion, you know, shit loads of money, he'd have to pay 250 quid. It was grossly unfair. And she introduced it first in Scotland, which was a big mistake, I think, on her part. And um, they had a campaign, and a year later they had a campaign in, in England and Wales. So that's the background to it. It was done to look after the rich and screw the poor. Nothing's changed, has it? No, not so. <laughs> Nothing changed at all. <laughs> campaign came from uh, Strathclyde Anti Poll Tax Federation, which was set up really basically by by, the, by what was the militant tendency within the Labour Party. They were about the only group who argued that uh, poll, the only way we could beat the poll tax is by non-payment. There was no other, there was no other way. But also, not just the fact of you know people saying oh, I'm not going to pay it. But the fact that thousands and millions of people could not pay it, you know, the amount of money they were going to be sucking out of some households would basically cripple those households. households. Uh, and really, there was no other, there was no alternative. Now, lots of people on the left said, oh, no, that, one of the, I think one of the famous quotes was, not paying your poll tax, tax would be like getting on a bus and, not, and refusing to pay the fare, <laughs> which is a bit of a nonsense. Uh, but in Scotland, they developed the tactics, the non-payment kicked off and... Uh, I think I can't remember the figures for Scotland. But I think there was over a, over a million not paying uh, in Scotland uh, after the first year had not paid, which was basically if, uh, twenty percent of the population hadn't paid a penny. Most of the others were well, a, a lot, the majority of people were in arrears, even those who were trying to pay it fell behind. Mm -hmm. So they had problems. Of course, they introduced it in Scotland because laws were a bit different than England. Their right to enter enter and seize property. Uh, the sheriff's men is completely different from the the, the distraint laws we had in this in, in England and Wales, uh, and that's why they did it there because they thought they were going to intimidate the rest of England. <laughs> but the Scots weren't having none of it. <laughs> in Glasgow, there was a huge and peaceful rally to mark the first anniversary of the introduction of the poll tax to Scotland. The organisers claimed it was the largest grassroots demonstration against government policy since the 1920s. That was uh, Tommy Sheridan, he was, isn't that where he became yes, famous, yeah, one yeah. made his name yeah, in the yeah. Poll Tax Federation? Yeah, a very, very good speaker at the time and, and basically they said what millions of people thought. Yeah. He, he came down and spoke uh, in Leicester, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. A brilliant speaker. Mm. And it was refreshing to hear somebody who actually had a vision, actually said we can make this. Because like, like Martin said, uh, the Labour Party was, you know, in a state of, you know, Nobody could defeat Thatcher's, you know, we got Kinnock, Kinnock was in charge, I think, mm. yeah. and he, he was bloody useless, you know, and he just said there's nothing we can do. For 13 years we had a Labour government, and they never took the railways back any public ownership! How dare he talk about credibility! 
for 13 years with the Labour government with a majority in Westminster. What happened to the gas? What happened to the electricity? What happened to everything else that was stolen by Thatcher and her cronies? They never took anything back! How did it, how did it develop then in England? It's, it's, would you just replicate the Scottish thing and it so I think I think every area had its own, own methods. Um, I know Leicester was a bit different from where I was at Market Arbour. Market Arbour is you know probably quite a wealthy area, but we had a we had a, we had a, bait, a backbone of yeah. a group a, month, a year before. Um, started off with a meeting of six of us in a pub, <laughs> having a chat yeah. and a pint, and then it went to a, we, we organised a public meeting asking friends and whatever to come, and we got forty people there. And then from that 40, we, we, we then uh, started knocking on doors and recruiting people at a pound a time to the anti-poll tax union. When we got 100, we called a mass meeting. We had 400 people turning up, 400 joined. Those 400 went out and got another 400. And that were members, that weren't just non-payers, that was members. So we had a, a union in Market Arbour of about 800. We could leaflet the whole town for, in about half an hour, once, once leaflets had been printed, because we had so many people volunteering, because they knew how important it was. And I think the same was in Leicester. Yeah. Obviously, Leicester a bit more unwieldy because of the size. But I mean, there's a document here: uh, anti uh, Leicestershire anti poll tax Federation, and it shows you all the phone numbers of all the anti poll tax, and there are all the contacts for all the different anti poll tax uh, uh, groups in Leicestershire. And as you can see, there's a fair number, and that's just the contact numbers, not <laughs> the amount of people involved. Yeah. And um, that same thing was just kicking off up and down the country all, right, all over. Yeah. Well, in, in Leicester we had, uh, uh, so we had New Parks Anti-Poll Tax Union, we had, uh, you know, Broadson Anti-Poll Tax Union, West End, you know, so it was all based on areas, but we all had representatives from each area who met regularly and discussed oh. uh, policy and what we were going to do. And it was primarily a working class thing as well? Oh, very much a working class thing. Yeah. And it was, it, it was, um, Really interesting because you got pe you got people come from who've never met each other, but lived on the same estate, and completely different cultural backgrounds. You know, and, and that's and it got us all together. I mean, it was really good from that point of view because a lot of those friendships lasted way after the poll tax, and not a lot we got a lot of respect for each other. You know, it didn't matter where you were from, we were all in it together. We were all fighting the poll tax, and. Uh, so we, we, we got information from people who knew what they're on about, you know, the, the legal you know, rights and payments. And we made sure everybody knew that. And we also, uh, you know, got information about what would happen at court. And um, so we gave people that information before they became liable for the mm -hmm. So it, it was an educational thing as well, telling people the rights and making sure that we were there to help support them. There was something you mentioned to me once, uh, Nick, about the poll tax, which was because it was getting really big. Loads of working class people were getting involved in it. That there were some like left, some of the left types were saying, "Oh, we don't want because yeah. because it, it's to do with one of the themes of my channel is about um, the identity politics and the social justice warrior thing, which I'm, I'm just get very annoyed with, as a lot of people do." And so this is a good example of, of that and why the left isn't always like that. Not all left-wing people are like that, in fact, even though a lot of them are, unfortunately. But that some of the lefts, anyway, were saying, oh, we don't want racist people, we don't want homophobic people, oh, we can't allow that. But you said that, that some of the militant people had a different attitude. Can you well, just tell us? Absolutely different. The, the people involved in it uh, from the militant had a different attitude altogether because... Um, we recognised that if you excluded everybody, working class people who were... Racism is a form of ignorance, it can be dealt with, but you can't be dealt with by excluding people. You've got to, you know, engage with them, you've got to talk to them. And we had one, uh, somebody, I think it was from Workers' Power or something, some ridiculous organisation, who come along and said, well, you can't have anybody's homophobe, but you can't have anybody, you know, who's, who's uh, you know. And I said, you've got to wipe out 50% of the bloody working class. <laughs> so you're surely saying to them, we can't have you in our meetings. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. ridiculous, yeah. absolutely ridiculous. But what we did do, when you got the guy coming there, Mark, Mark made some racist comments, people had talked to him, you know, and he, he found out that the next day he was fighting against the bailiffs to stop some bailiffs coming in. And there'd be an Asian bloke there standing beside him, you know, supporting him. And that was a that was a big breakthrough, 
for a lot of those people and it really changed their attitudes altogether. But you're right, the trend, not all of the trend they left, but a lot of the trend they left were sort of on the bandwagon, if you know what I mean. They were sort of saying this. And they, they completely missed the point about having a mass movement of people mm. and getting together because that mass movement can become educated in other ways, not just about the particular issue we're fighting. And they missed that mm. point altogether. Mm -hmm. But the militant tendency didn't.